Welcome, my name is Paul with Business Club, here today with Mel Bellissimo. So Mel is an easygoing, passionate, and goofy father, Muay Thai crew teacher in Thai, and most importantly, a student of life. Mel founded Decorous Life, offering leadership and life coaching services to bring clarity and a deeper sense of connection for men and women who manage a nuts so amount of responsibilities. In addition to co-founding Dude Buddha, he is a partner at Health Genie, where he provides consulting services to gym, schools, and recreational facilities in setting up Muay Thai programs. Mel has been engulfed in Muay Thai for almost 25 years, spending two years training, fighting, teaching in Thailand. He was at the helm of successful MMA school in Toronto for over 11 years, where he supported thousands of people from entrepreneurships, executives, and children. Whether in outside the ring, ability to control the impact of emotions in order to achieve clarity and focus under stress is a major factor in winning. It was a very experience that he realized a deeper value of his martial arts training and coaching and supporting the lives of his members. This attracted corporate executives, entrepreneurs, and individuals to carry an incredible amount of responsibilities to seek the crew for advice. His desire to be even of greater value to those individuals led him down the path of metaphysics where he studied for five years and facilitated a wide variety of classes and seminars across the globe. He sat on international teaching panels as a speaker for a number of esoteric martial arts and business events. He is now working on his advanced extensive training towards certification in choice theory, leading management and reality therapy. Mel will be joining us as a keynote speaker for Adapt and Overcome at uh, on uh, June 19th uh, uh, on the live events, stories, and public speaking chapter. So Mel, it's it's great to have you with us today. Thank you, Paul. Really great to be here. Thank you so much for having me. What an honor. Uh, Thank you so much for the opportunity. I do want to give a little shout out to Majid though and say thank you to Majid for for bringing forward my name. Um, Yeah, really great. I'm, I'm super, super, super honored to be here with you, Paul. So Mel, it's it's incredible to hear about your background at t- peak level MMA, uh, Thai boxing. You're also an athlete. You play soccer and some other, um, you know, weightlifting. So tell us about um, what we can learn from, you know, the the discipline, the skills that you've learned from studying martial arts, and how those can be applied to entrepreneurship and to business. It's a great question, Paul. I think that first and foremost, I want to talk a little bit about the core principles. I have a few core principles and I call them the ABC of the chorus life, awareness, balance, and clarity. And when you look at these words, um, I try to give my clients that work with me and, and, and everyone that, that comes into my path, this idea of the importance of having these three things. So these are the core principles. When we talked about balance, Dr. Glasser in Choice Theory says we are an internal control system. And therefore, we should not let external psychology affect what happens in the internal. Uh, the, the, the more uh, metaphysical uh, or spiritual teachers would talk about us being a body, mind, and a spirit. So my challenge to everybody listening is to say, when you talk about internal balance, we talk about exercising the, each point of the triangle of body, mind, and spirit. So my challenge for all my clients and for all those listening is, what do you do to exercise your body? What do you do to exercise your mind? What do you do to exercise your spirit? And that's the first component is balance. Because if you're balanced on the inside, what you manifest on the outside will be balanced. So there's the first core principle. Clarity is the second core principle. And how do we get clarity? Well, I work with my clients specifically on or at least at the beginning, talking about a vision board and the power of vision board creation. I do it from a different perspective, Paul. I do it not just by putting your goals. Go ahead. But I put it about... I just have to show you this because you're seeing a vision board. This is my vision board right uh, right here. So totally believe in vision boards. I'm totally totally on with you. Perfect. Perfect, Paul. And the way that I do my vision boards, and I do a free vision board workshop um, uh, once every quarter, um, is I do, I do it from the perspective of what I call desired state. I don't do it from goals. People have used vision boards for goals. I use desired state. And desired state is your dream. And there's lots of science that I explained uh, about it. But that develops the second core principle, which is clarity. 
So you've got balance, body, mind, and spirit. You've got clarity and vision boards. What that will bring you, Paul, is awareness. And in the world of metaphysics, we talk about that there's two kinds of energies, energies for self and energies outside of yourself. And one of the biggest components in, in and I, I have this, this sort of coined line that I've used is awareness is the result of self-love. And so while everybody's busy in their life and doing their things and having their J-O-B or having their career, the reality is, Paul, is, is that I've come to understand what my villain, the villain in the story brand, the, the villain in, in, in what am I, what's my evil nemesis? And the answer is programming. That we believe that we have to uh, live a particular way, we have to get a good education, find a good pensionable job, find a partner, have 2.2 kids, work for 30, 40 years to buy stuff, then develop cancer and then die not taking the stuff that you bought with you. And so my philosophy is very simple. I'm, and, and Albert Wong, who we spoke about earlier, was on my coffee and biscotti show on Friday. I have a platform, a live show on Twitch. And he said, it, Albert, if you're going to share with all those in the Twitchiverse something about what you did with your life, what would, what would be advice, the advice you would give? And he said, do what makes you happy because you don't know how long you have here. So continue to do the things that make you happy. And that's the, that was a, a true, something that we've all heard. But when, you, when you're a chartered accountant like, like Albert, who's gone and working, we talked about him working at the, at the, with, with the junior achievements and working with, with uh, teenagers and high school students and even elementary school students with entrepreneurship um, is a true testament to him doing and, and listening to his heart and fulfilling his soul's desires. And, and that's sort of the ABCs of the chorus life. And, you know, through the process of the coaching that I do and, and my business, you know, it's funny because you asked me to write a paragraph and I was thinking about this, Paul, for a long time. And I said, you know, I've, you read this wonderful sort of description about me being a goofy father. I've got, a, I've got an incredible three-year-old son. And here's the thing. You know who I am, Paul? I'm the guy that's going to help you get balance in your life. I'm the guy that's going to ask you the right questions so that you can get clarity in your life. And then in that process, we're going to talk about something called awareness and you're going to get it. You're going to get self-awareness and you're going to get awareness for others' energies. And that's what I do. And that's who I am. I love that. And um, Mel, now I recently uh, heard a video you talking about um, about telling your story, but also living your story. I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about that um, that recent video that you pr presented about uh, about telling your story. Yeah, that's that's wonderful. Thanks for bringing that up, Paul. I wrote a blog. And I did a video of actually reading the blog because I wanted to share my energy of what I did in, in, in putting together. The blog was called Crew Mel, TV Repair Guy. And I said this, I said this, uh, I wrote this blog, Paul, because I, I was told once in a metaphysical class that I took that we are the directors of our own movie and that we get to choose the adventures we go on and we get to choose the cast that we want to play with. What's interesting about that, Paul, is that it made me think about how, if you remember those old television sets that had all the dials. So I start off this blog by saying, you know, many moons ago, back in the day, if you had a television, you had to get off, off your comfortable chair to go and turn the dial. And there were two buttons maybe for the channels. And then there was uh, 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 an on off that was also the volume. And then there was the contrast and then there was the brightness. And they made about 200 pounds, right? Those big TVs. <laughs> That's right. With the big picture tube inside of it. It was huge. But I said, I want you to, I, I want people to, to, I wanted to paint a picture of what it would be like to use the analogy of one of these old school TVs mm -hmm. and how that relates to our life, that as we start living our soul purpose, our higher self, our true self, the volume of our movie starts to go up. 
then I talked about the channels and I said, you know, what are you watching on your screen? Are you watching old reruns, black and white reruns of, of the stuff that you've done before? Or do you want to turn to something that's more live, more present? Something that has to do with you living in the moment. And then I talked about the brightness. And I said that as we get more clarity, as we start to really dig deep into understanding what is it that we want from this power tool that moves us through this physical ex existence? What do we want? And I said, the more we get clarity, the more the brightness of our picture comes and there's more, more, there's more shine to it. You shine your light to the world. And I have this wonderful quote that, um, and I wanna get it for you, Paul. I wanna get it for you because it's worth reading. But it's this, so I'm going to put on my glasses. There's a wonderful book that I wrote, uh, that I read, um, written by a guy named Kent Nurburn. And he was talking about work. And he said, Kent Nurburn explains that we should think of work as a vocation, which comes from the Latin word for calling, which comes from the word voice. When you look at it like this, work should be something that calls to you, that gives you, gives you a voice to who you are and what you want to say in this world. And I love that because that went perfectly along with understanding the voice of who you want to be and what you want to show on your TV screen. And then the contrast, the contrast is the one that adds sharpness to the, to the picture. And the sharpness is what we call the near white uh, uh, shadow detail of, of, the, um, of the picture on the screen. And in there, I talked about balance, about exercising the body, the mind and the spirit. And I talked about how in having this balance, we will manifest what happens on the outside. So, so there's a, a sort of a brief synopsis of, of what it is. And I've got a new one coming out, Paul. It's going to be called Crew Mal from TV Repair Guy to Electrician. And I'm going to give okay, you excellent. Well, I'll, like I'll definitely make sure I, I checked that out. So, you know, when you're talking about TV, it reminded me think of a Blockbuster. So people used to always watch uh, videos. They used to go to Blockbuster, a very successful business. But what happened is they they failed to adapt to the change uh, change in media technology and uh, you know now we have Netflix and, and whatnot and same thing we saw like you know last year the world changed right we had this pandemic uh, people who are working in the restaurant industry and other established industries you know lost their job and uh, you know the world has changed people are working from home so would you have anything to say for for you know I don't know just going through this transition where you have to something you're used to doing. I mean, myself, I even lost my, I, I lost my job during the pandemic. I had to, you know, we could get a new, start a new business and that. And uh, what would you say to those like going through a rough time right now, have to go through a transition, you know, find, you know, carve it a new path. Even our friend Jared, you know, who he, uh, you know, networking, run a networking business that got completely uh, thrown, thrown under because uh, people can't meet in person, but he, he pivoted, he went to, you know, virtual events and is now like, you know, six figure business now uh, with virtual events. So what would you say for people like to allow them to easily, you know, to, to be able to pivot their business to a, in a new direction? It's a great question, Paul. And I'm going to start off by, by saying this to you. And I've said it on multiple podcasts that I've been on. When you look back at this time, Paul, you're going to make the choice now, whether or not we're going to look back at this and say that the pandemic was the greatest thing that ever happened in my life or whether or not this was the thing that ruined me and it was the worst time of my life. And what I love about what you've done, Jared, who's a fantastic human being, um, is you pivoted. And, and, and I'm gonna start off also by, by adding this wonderful meme I saw uh, at the beginning of the pandemic that said, this is mother nature sending us to our room for how poorly we've treated her. This was a wonderful time to be introspective, Paul, for us to really get out, get the noise out of the way and really look within. When somebody told me once, if spirit is up there and our heart is here, then this is in the way. So what I did is, is I also lost my job. Um, I've also, I also lost my job. I was directing a, a, a Thai boxing program for a new MMA school in Ottawa. And of course the pandemic hit and I lost mine. And I, I decided, you know, I said, I have a choice. Um, do I want to go and get myself a J-O-B? Um, or do, do I want to start forging my own path again? I've always been a coach. I've been a coach for 25 years. 
but I needed to change the kind of coaching that I was going to do. And I knew, I knew, Paul, that it was, it was time for me to uh, get out of my comfort zone, um, push the fear, push through the fear of being a coach. And, you know, people talk about becoming an authority in the coaching space. I'm not the Tony Robbins yet. But I'll tell you this. I think that the answer to your question is I pivoted, you pivoted. Let's talk about what we pivoted to. What did you do, Paul, to, look, to, to really understand that I have to do something that I'm passionate about. I have to do something that makes me happy. And in the end, Paul, that's what I did. We all have to pivot. You, you brought a wonderful exam, example of Blockbuster didn't pivot. And what happened? They went down the, they, they, they went down the, the tube fast. But this is what this time was about, was about becoming a little bit more introspective. You've heard the story of the professor with the, with that brings into the classroom, the mason jar, and he fills it full of golf balls, and then he fills it full of marbles, and then he fills it full of sand. Well, the truth is, bro, is that he says in his conclusion of the story, he says, those golf balls in the mason jar represent the most important part of your lives. And that's what the pandemic gave us, an opportunity to sort of do some um, uh, inventory, an inventory check-in of what's important to us. And so I think that that's the key component in, in pivoting uh, during this challenging time on the planet. Yeah, no, I, I love what you had to say. I, you know, and, and so much what you said resonated with me. In fact, I gave a talk at our event last year, Adapt to Come, uh, on how nature is some lessons we learn from nature, right? You know, when I talked about the pang the, the pangolins that were being, uh, you know, basically ext extincted by like slaughtering, they had, you know, 80 tons of pangolin scales. And then that, in, and then there was, uh, it looked like it appeared that some, you know, the, this pandemic started between uh, the pangolins and uh, like a bat or something like that, or some, you know, in, uh, you know, there was a, some, some theories about, how this started. And, that, and that's what I saw. It's like, this is nature teaching a, us a lesson that, okay, we need, we need to tune it. We've been abusing, uh, you know, uh, nature and, and this is the result of, so we've had a big lesson to learn, but it's, it's also forced us to, um, you know, stay true to yourself. I, I, I use the time to learn a new skill. I study business analysis. I considered like even a, you know, a, a complete pivot in my, but I, but I, I still, um, you know, be, being a wealth coach for 13 years, I, it's still, a passion of mine too. And I like, uh, it allows me to help people, you know, plan out their future, at, you know, too. So I still, um, you know, love doing that, but it's, I just love what you had to say about um, using this opportunity to really understand your true calling. And, uh, you know, maybe, maybe they, you, you were on the wrong path to begin and you found something even better. Right. And, uh, and if not, you've had it, you, you use this time to have a deeper understanding of what's important to you and what, what your true passions are. And uh, because, you know, people aren't following their true passion, then it sets up that cognitive dissonance, right? If they're not uh, have the tuned into the right channel there, then that's when they get depression and it's your body telling you, okay, you're not following your true path. Um, it's like, you know, you need, you need, uh, you need to adjust the set. <laughs> you need to adjust the TV. In fact, in the world of metaphysics, we were taught that, that hell is, is, moving away, further away from what your soul desires. That's true hell. You're just doing things because you're looking at the shiny thing. You're looking at the money. You're looking at, you know, what this stuff you can buy and keeping up with the Joneses and having all the toys and all this other crap that, that people talk about. And, and yet the most time that we ever feel fulfillment is when we're aligned with what we're supposed to be doing and when we're helping others. That's the beauty. And in, in all the books that I've read about, you know, metaphysics and all the masters that walk the planet, you know, there's a wonderful, wonderful reference in, in a book that I am, I really resonated with. It was a book by Neil Donald Walsh called Conversations with God. And it was a New York Times bestseller. And there was a three part. And I think he just released a four part maybe a year or two ago. And he talked in the representation of God, he talks about all this stuff. He talks about how, you know, we really need to sort of look within, that all the answers are within us. All we have to do is remember, remember who we are, 
take a moment, get out of our brain and into our heart so that we can really get to a point. This may sound all hoo-ha, but uh, I don't know, Paul, the truth is, is, is that that's the battle that I'm facing. I'm battling the villain, the villain of programming that says, no, if you're an accountant, you have to be do this kind of job and you have to do this. There's, there's so much of what you, everybody else thinks you have to do. And in my blog, I said, I asked the question, Paul, what are you doing? Are you living your life story or are you living somebody else's narrative? And that's the, the powerful piece. For yeah, me. I know that's, that's exactly true. And there's a lot of pressure on you. It's, it's you know, your, your brothers, your siblings, your parents, you know, expectations, um, society. Um, they always ask, you know, do you have kids, right? I mean, you know, people who don't have, choose to not have kids. I mean, that's a pretty tough, you know, people asking you, so, so do you have kids or, I mean, I have, I have two girls myself, but it's, um, you know, people have this expectation, you know, you have to have the house, you know, you have to buy a big house, blah, blah, blah. And I mean, God, like cost of house, houses these years, why, you know, why not just rent, you know, it's, it's fine to, to, to go a different path, not follow what to society's expectations are you. Now, Mel, you, you I know you're, you've studied, uh, you know, Buddhism and, um, you know, I, I was reading recently about the, you know, the chakras and the energy. And as you're saying, like freeing up that energy and, you know, not associating with material possessions. And I was wondering if you could share some of the wisdom, wisdom you've learned from, from Buddhism, um, you know, in, in really helping with mindset by not being attached to those material possessions. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a great question, Paul. I don't know that I'm going to give you a, a great answer other than to say that, uh, you know, this is, this is where the internal journey, where the, where the journey of the self comes in. Um, I run, so the best way that I would answer you this is this. I run an anonymous invite-only space for men called Dude Buddha. And I run it with a guy who in Ottawa is, I call him the celebrity, but he's just a, an awesome human being and his name is Tuan. And I run this group and there was a post that somebody uh, um, put on the, on the platform and it was, I'm a billionaire with a billion problems. And what he wrote on it is he said, I have, I have more money than I, what I can do with. And he said, I would give it all up to have a relationship with my daughters. That I would give all the material things up. The pursuit of all of this is, there's nothing wrong with being wealthy. And, and I'll give you a quote that was from the Bible that somebody told me was in one of my classes said, there's a quote that people say that money is at the root of all evil or money is the root of all evil. The part that they were missing out was that it's the love of money that is the root of all evil. Meaning that if you're chasing all these material things, Paul, and you're gonna develop a heart attack to get it, it just doesn't seem worth it to me. And there's that wonderful quote from the Dalai Lama. He said, what, ex what surprised him most about man or about humans? And he said, man, he says, because we sacrifice our health to make money. And then we sacrifice our money to recuperate our health. And then he goes on and on talking about not living in the future. But the point is, is that this is all, this is all a, a, a philosophy. I mean, I don't, many people don't even consider Buddhism a religion. They consider a philosophy, a philosophy to life. So, I mean, my experience, Paul, in Buddhism was living in Thailand with no air conditioning, no fridge, one little bag, you know, one little suitcase, and... Paul, I was the happiest guy on the planet because the only stress I had was, geez, I wonder what I'm going to eat today. <laughs> that was it, man. I trained six hours a day. I ran 72 kilometers a week. I trained to fight on the king's birthday in northern Thailand in Chiang Mai. And I was the main event on the card. And I represented Canada. And it was all about nothing to do with material goods and all about living the experience. So, you know, when you talked about housing and, you know, everybody says we have a house, what about if you rented, but you traveled the world? Would, would that be better? <laughs> As opposed to being house poor, would you rather just rent and go live your life? To me, that makes a whole lot of sense. Oh yeah, no, I love it. I mean, that's a sort of a fantasy that I have is to travel the world and, uh, you know, to, uh, you know, to live that, just follow your, your passions. It's, um, you know, it, it's true, you know, definitely you want to live your, you only have 
one life, right? Might as well make it count. So um, this has been fantastic, uh, Mel, and uh, so great, uh, grateful for you to share your insights with us today. And uh, it's been really enlightening to, uh, you know, to hear your, your thoughts and, uh, and also inspiring, you know, with the success you've had in MMA and, uh, you know, how you've been able to even adjust your own business to that. Super excited. Looking forward to hearing your talk at Adapt and Overcome on uh, July uh, on June 19th. And uh, you'll be there with your two buddies, Jared and Majid. And that will be a, a fantastic talk. So, so excited to, uh, to, to hear that and, uh, and really appreciate your time to uh, be with us today. Thank you, Paul. Really appreciate it. Thanks so much, brother. All the best to you.